Hey, how's it going? Derek from Make Media Studios, and today I'm going to be going over with you a quick importing and exporting tutorial in Premiere Pro. If this is your first time to the channel, you should go down below and hit that subscribe button. You should also smash that like button and leave a comment if you have any questions. This exporting tutorial was actually a community asked question that I'm responding to. So if you leave a comment below and have an idea for a video you want to see, I will put it on my list of videos and create it in the future. So this one goes out to Robbie. This is my importing and exporting workflow for Premiere Pro. All right, so let's get right into Premiere Pro and we're gonna go over how to import and export your first video. This is gonna be really simple. I'm gonna pull in a video clip into Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you how to create the correct sequence settings for the video files that you're using in your editing. And then I'm going to export out what I would normally export to one of my clients which is gonna be a YouTube video, a Facebook video, and an Instagram video. Each one of these videos go to these different platforms and need to have a little bit different packaging in the final product. So you wanna give your customer all these different options so that they're not taking a YouTube video, putting it into Instagram, Instagram using their algorithm to then break down that video smaller, which makes the video look really bad. If you export out the video at first, to Instagram settings, then Instagram doesn't have to put as much um, compression and um, resizing of that file in using their algorithm, and it makes the video look way better if it's already to the standards that they want. All right, first things first, let's get right into Premiere Pro. All right, so I'm opening up Premiere Pro here. My idea here is I'm gonna show you how I would create my new project bring in some footage, then export that footage. So right here, I'm gonna click new project. All right, so we'll call this import and export. Find a file, find a location. I got this folder called import export, choose, hit okay. All right, so what you need to do now is I don't have anything in here. This is a brand new project. Um, I already have a folder here with some raw footage um, this is actually a clip from the most recent podcast. That was the video before this one. You should go ahead and check that out. A little plug for myself there. Pull this in, drop it right into your project window. It's going to import the files right there. That's how I pull all of my, you know, video footage into Premiere Pro. Now, this has its own properties. If you click properties here, you can see the properties of this file. It's a 4K file. 23.976 frame rate, um, and that's and it's a QuickTime movie file, okay? It's .mov. So I think some people would then click here, click sequence, and they would use some sequence preset to then start a sequence and drop their files in. I don't like doing that. Um, Premiere has this fancy way of just taking your video footage, dropping it right into your timeline. You can't have an open timeline. See, you have to drop it in like this. It creates a sequence right here that's made to the settings of that video file. So whatever your camera A is or your most of your footage, usually for me, my interview footage, that's gonna be what I create my sequence off of. If I'm gonna put B-roll in there from like maybe a GoPro or um, a cell phone or something different, I, I wouldn't make the entire sequence based off of one of those. I'm gonna use it off of my A camera, which is my Sony a7 III going through my Ninja 5. All right, so this is where that file drops right into the timeline. Now you can hit here and go sequence, sequence settings, and you can see it's an editing mode of custom. The time base matches the properties that we showed earlier of the video file. Your frame rate matches that same file size, and the rest of it fills out all on its own. So. That's my best way of importing video footage. Now, of course, now I'm gonna sit here and edit this timeline and create my video. That I will save for another video in the future. It's way longer. So that's an import. Simple import, that's how I start. Um, now let's go into the exporting. So what I always like to do is I find the end of my video. You can use your up and down button to toggle whatever V1 is set your up and down button is going to follow that. So you can go right to the end of your clip, okay? You hit O for out. You're setting an out point on your timeline. So as you can see how it highlighted all this, 
it's going to export from there to that end. Say you only wanted to export right here. Well, you put an in point, okay? So now you have two points right here where you have your in and out. During of this timeline, that's what I wanna export. For me, I'm gonna export this entire clip, okay? So I can pull this over here back to the beginning. I can also put this back. I can go to my cursor, put it at the beginning. I can hit in, all right? Those are your ins and out points. If you wanna remove those ins and out points, you can right click right in this gray area and you can clear in and out. That goes away, okay? If you were in this right here and you exported, it would export this entire clip. But say you had, let's just cut a piece of this right here and you had this sitting over here in the timeline um, and you didn't put ins and outs, it's going to render from the beginning all the way to the end with this big black section in the middle. So if you have some extra footage that you threw off to the right and you export it without using ins and outs, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get a big dark area at the end of your video, okay? So let's control Z and bring that back, okay? So like I said, I'm gonna put an out point right there. I always do that, it's just kind of um, makes things, I know things are gonna work correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and go to File, Export, Media, okay? So this is where it starts, okay? This is the, um, I use H.264 format for most of my exports. Um, so say you made a podcast. This is a, this is an interesting one. Let's say you made it a podcast. You can go to MP3, right? As a format, and you can just export the audio. So if you made a video podcast and you only wanted the audio track, that's how I make my audio version. Then I go over to back over to H.264, and this is where I create my different videos. So presets. I start with some presets. Um, what's great in H.264 is they have all these presets here. So let's say I want to do a YouTube 4K video. That's going to be the first video I give out to my clients because most of my clients are going to put their video on YouTube. All right, that's preset for it. So let's open this up. I want to maximize this a little bit more so we can kind of slide down. All right, so it's preset for a YouTube 4K video. As we come down here, um, the main one that I always look at is your bitrate settings. As you can see, YouTube wants a target bitrate of 40 megabytes per second. Um, so that's, that's what I would do there. One thing I change in this is I go to two pass. It just combs through the video once and then combs through it again for the export. It just makes it a little bit crisper and a little bit cleaner. It takes double the amount of time to export. So if you're in a rush and your computer's really slow, using a two pass might not be your best um, thing. You have to a school project you gotta turn in or something like that. Um, but for most clients, I want them to have the final best video that they can have. So I'm gonna do a two pass, all right? I'm gonna hit Q, okay? So Q, instead of hitting export, is gonna bring that into media encoder, okay? So it's gonna open up this program right here. All right, so Media Encoder is kind of your staging area for all your exports. You don't have to export out of Premiere. Make one, hit export, wait. Make another one, hit export, wait. Make another one, hit export, wait. Because you're gonna make about three or four exports possibly. You don't wanna be sitting there um, having to wait in between each one of those. You wanna set them all into the queue in Media Encoder, hit the play button, it encodes all these videos for you while you go off and do whatever you else you need to do. Another good thing about doing it in Media Encoder is you can then go back to Premiere Pro and continue editing other videos, or you can continue editing that same video. So say you needed to export a rough draft, but you still knew you wanted to continue editing. If you did it in Premiere Pro, you'd have to wait for that to finish before you can go back to editing. But in, if you queue it to Media Encoder, it's going to export the version from when you hit Q. Anything you do past that is now going to be a new version that's not going to be rendered while it's in Media Encoder. So that's that's what I do. That's my whole setup, okay? So here we have the first one that we brought in, okay? It says preset custom. That's what we had before. Here's your output file. Let's say we want to change that. Um, I like to label my things. So let's label this. Let's go to my desktop, import, export. I usually make a new folder called um, for customer. Usually what I create, something like that, so that I know those are all the files that I'm going to give to my customer. And then let's, let's just call this customer underscore YouTube 
4K, okay? So I know that this is the YouTube 4K version, so that they have that. I save, okay. Now I'm gonna go back and set up all my other ones. I'm gonna go into Premiere Pro, I'm gonna File, Export, Media, okay. Now, again, I'm gonna find my YouTube 1080p. I use the YouTube 1080p to create my Instagram ones because there is no preset for Instagram. So, but Instagram wants a 1080p video. So now that you've clicked YouTube 1080p, you move on down here to that bit rate like I showed before, and you change this to 3.5. Instagram wants a 3,500 kilobytes per second bit rate for their videos. So 3.5 megabytes is 3,500 kilobytes. So put 3.5 right there, do two pass, Again, make that one 3.5, so it combs through and makes the bitrate 3.5, then it combs through again and makes it even closer and even more clearer. All right, so now that you got that, we hit Q, go back over to Media Encoder. As you can see here, I'm gonna change the um, name and where it's going. I'm gonna put this in my customer folder. I'm gonna change this to customer, Insta, and that's it. I'm gonna save that. So now I got a YouTube 4K, I got an Instagram video, and now I'm gonna go down here back to Premiere, File, Export Media. I need one more, Facebook. There's actually a pre preset for that. There's a Facebook 1080p and a Facebook 4K. Well, this is a 4K video, so I'm gonna click 4K. It automatically makes it all. If you go down here to your bit rates, as you can see, this first pass is 24. All right, so when you come on down here to the bitrate settings again, you're gonna see that for Facebook, it sets it for a target bitrate of 24 with a maximum bitrate of 50. Again, I'm gonna put this to two pass. I'm gonna leave those settings because those have been optimized by Adobe for Facebook. I'm now gonna hit Q, come back over to my media encoder, click on this, change where I'm gonna set, save it to. All right, so there I have my three videos. I got my customer YouTube 4K video, I got my customer Instagram video, and my customer Facebook video. And now I'm gonna hit play. This is now gonna render out each one of these in Media Encoder, as you can see down here at the bottom. I can now go back over to Premiere Pro, and I can continue to edit. I can cut this, cut this, move this, move this, but when you come back over to Media Encoder, that's not gonna change anything. That is, you're still rendering out where you were before when you hit Q. So you can continue working if you want to. Media Encoder is the best way to go. I would not suggest exporting out of Premiere Pro. I do it sometimes, the presets are there and you can. Um, if I don't have to work on anything else or I'm doing a quick Instagram post, I might just go right out of Premiere Pro. Use the same settings I talked about, just don't hit Q, hit render. That's it. That is my quick importing and exporting video for Premiere Pro. Um, these are kind of the three different output files that I give to my customers. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thank you again for watching this quick tutorial. If you like it, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. Um, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to or don't subscribe. Here we have a pretty cool community where we got people, uh, we're growing um, exponentially here. So if you don't wanna be a part of that, don't hit subscribe. Um, you can go ahead and check out some of the links in our bio. We have some of the equipment we use for these videos. We have a Spotify link there to listen to our podcast. We got episode six coming out this Saturday. Um, we're posting twice a week. So subscribe, like, comment, share, be a part of our community. And thank you very much. Have a good day. Wait, stop. Look, there's more things that you can still do. Look, if you minimize whatever video you're currently watching of mine and you scroll down a little bit, there's going to be this red subscribe button. You know what you do? You click it. Just check this out. Ready? Watch. It's it crazy. It goes from red to gray. Right? Blew my mind. I want you to check to see if yours goes from red to gray. And I want you to leave a comment down below if it did. And that's about it. Now that you now now you're at the end of the video. Go on ahead and watch something else now.